Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our Republic of Ireland all time eleven, and we are on to our strikers now. Uh, obvious. We're basically going for what we have the best and kind of in their goal scoring records probably as well. Robbie Keane sixty eight goals, Noel Quinn twenty. Well, should we goals. just start and go? Robbie Keane's in. That's one position done because we don't even need to. to yeah, but we, 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 but we need we need to talk about it though too. Uh, Noel Quinn twenty one goals, Frank Stapleton twenty goals, Don Givens nineteen goals, um, and then kind of going after that you got John Aldridge, Tony Cascarino, Tommy Coyne. And there's some other players in there that get mentions, but they're nowhere near the level in which uh, those guys are. They're kind of in their own bracket. But you've, you know, Clinton Morrison was it was a good servant for us, and it seems to be one of those kind of players everyone always remembers, no matter what, because he was the funny kind of joke. Uh, yeah, basically, okay. and he always joking about being the funny guy in the squad and stuff, and he was Roy Keane's best mate. So just people like him always get a mention. I think Kevin Doyle, who was a long partner for Robbie Keane in most recent times, and then Shane Long then as well. I know he's dipped of 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 recent times, but, you know, he still has scored important goals. Poland, Germany goals, stuff like that. You know, he'll work his arse off for you, basically. But I don't think he's up in the goal-scoring bracket yeah. as, say, the other players. I mean, you... As you say, I think clean sweep Robbie. I I, I don't yeah. think he can look past Robbie in regards his goal scoring uh, record was absolutely unbelievable. And you, you you look at other national teams and not not many players get near him. You know, uh, sixty eight goals in an Irish team from the year that he was in is an incredible. Uh, I think return I think as well when we looked at I always remember the teams of the 90s kind of coming through there was always that thing that maybe we didn't have an out and out goal scorer I think maybe Frank and John were maybe the most natural guys but they just never seemed to get to the 30 35 goals for whatever reason and then Robbie came along and he just seemed to make it easy and all of a sudden we're here sitting talking about his 68 goals in an Irish shirt you know, you won't have anybody from Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, or even England, and the the heights and the games they've got to, and the the supposed quality of the likes of Wayne Rooney, Alan Shearer, Bobby Charlton, none of them could even run the game. Yeah, and I think what you have to mention with that as well is that the likes of the Wayne Rooney and the Linekers and all that, with no offend, like. Probably playing with better players mm. than Robbie Keane was at a lot of the time. You would have had trails. David Beckham putting in crosses for you exactly, and stuff like you know, that. Yeah. Like, so it, that's what just makes his his, his international goal score record so unbelievable. And I was lucky enough. I was in, I was in the Lansdowne Road when he scored the he scored two against Malta. His his first goals for Ireland, and I like I just never forget the. He was a terror, like he terrorized the mm. defense. So intelligent with his movement, nipping at heels, just a, a, like a joy to watch. But I just remember the buzz around the stadium. That like, well, this lad's like eighteen at the time or something, and like he could potentially go on and you know become our, our greatest ever striker. And you know, luckily enough to say, they kind of turned out exactly that way, didn't yeah. it? Didn't it? Like, I mean, he's the fourth fourth highest goal scorer, I believe, joint fourth in Europe. Uh, of all time, I think level with Gerd Muller. That's kind of the the yeah. level. I think, but behind the likes of Puskas. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah, I I, I can't. You, you cannot make an icon. No, they're for iconic else. figures of yeah. world football. Never yes. mind yeah. Irish and English. This is world yeah. football. You're but talking. wasn't uh, wasn't there a period? Sorry to go up, but wasn't there a period where you know before the two thousand and two World Cup, he hadn't scored a goal for a number of games, and people were saying that he he had to be left out of the team. Yeah, I think. I can't remember the 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 specifics of that, but he, um, he, he scored a goal quite against a few Holland, in Holland, and then uh, hadn't scored. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I didn't score time. again in the qualification that I can. Yeah, I can remember, but possibly that's Since correct. That yeah, but then but that's I mean, an easy headline. But then isn't it? then he went to the know, World Cup. And oh, he I'm not, I'm not yeah. uh, saying anything yeah. bad. I'm just saying that no, but it's it's almost as if something to write about every striker on the international level goes through a dry yeah. period. Yeah. yeah. The but majority he, of them do. Yeah, they yeah. all do. Yeah. And, and, you know. He went to the finals, he scored three goals in a World Cup. I, I don't think we're ever going to get another Irishman that's going to go and score three goals in a World Cup, no. sadly. I would love to be proven wrong on that. Yeah, well, I'd love to see another Irishman up, score, score in a World Cup <laughs> and start with that. Yeah. But even um, you look at the moves that he got, like he went to Serie A and was it Lippi who signed him? So at the time for Inter Milan, but then he got sacked, and then um, 
who came in. Uh, I can't. What was our old assistant? Oh, Tardelli. Tardelli. Yeah, he came in. Sorry, uh, he actually follows us. Uh, sorry about that, Marco. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, no, yeah, he came in, and then and then ultimately Robbie yeah. left and came back to to, to yeah. Leeds. But you remember the the players in which were ahead of him in that Inter team, Ronaldo, like yeah. when he was unreal. Like uh, cool. I think Zamorano and maybe Crespo were in there as well at the time. I I could I could be wrong. And he was Crespo. a kid. Yeah, he was a kid when he was at Inter yeah. Milan, you know, and then came back obviously with Leeds and had a great career with Spurs and Liverpool to a point, and then Spurs again, and then ends Celtic up at Leeds, Celtic, Leeds, yeah. LA Celtic. Galaxy. Yeah. He's still half a season at uh, Celtic, one player of the year as well. Yeah, so um, you know, he he's he really he, he just he's he's someone who just loves playing football. I think that's what it comes down to. His energy. You talked about that first game. It reminded me of that first game, and it was just like. A kid let out in a sweet shop, just running after everything, chasing down things. And that's what you always got from him. You always knew that when Robbie was on the pitch, he would give you absolutely everything. He loved playing for the shirts. And I think even now he's kind of half trying to impress Mick in training, going, oh, just give us another <laughs> cap there, Mick. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll get 70 goals for you. But don't underestimate his, his absolute class. Like I'd say he was at his peak probably at, you know, at the clo- at club level with Spurs and some of the goals he scored. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, he was, oh, yeah, yeah, they were brilliant sparks. Yeah, pretty can throw Berbatov in there. With him <laughs> this, but, he's got uh, an Irish granny, is he? No, but like, like, the thing with Robbie Keane is, you know, he's, he's 100 and whatever Premier League goals as well. He's probably the biggest, the most successful um import to the uh, MLS ever. Mm. He won Player of the Year there a good few years, even in his twilight years. And he was like, key to the Galaxy's success yeah, as well. Yeah, and he was MVP player as well. Yeah, wasn't he? yeah. So times. like you just kind of the thing with Robbie Keane is you don't really have to argue because unlike a lot of the other people we're going to talk about would be saying what they were like as players. The numbers back Robbie Keane's argument yeah. of true. Oh, he's in a league of his own. And probably as well the most money ever spent on an Irishman in fees. Yeah, that could be bit. could be corrected on that, but possibly you would think with all the moves that he had, uh, and they were all obviously strikers. Are usually the big money moves too. Yeah. Um, I imagine I imagine got some sort of uh, conversation. There was that. a stack on around uh, at one stage a long time ago. Yeah. That he it was up around eighty ninety million and that might have even been before they were all kind of fifteen twenty million moves weren't they and mm. that's a lot I think of, that's was, a lot of ten percent to be pocketing as well you know? I think it's twenty million move to, to to Liverpool and then even back to Spurs for a bit less think, yeah but like but Leeds, not too much less yeah. yeah but like even Inter say it was maybe. I don't know, seven, eight, no, and then yeah, Leeds. That was 15. big back then, though. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Relatively. Uh, okay, so it. so Robbie. Yeah, but I just think we we did have to do a reflection on his career, yeah. and oh, you yeah, know, yeah. I I do think, and you know, even speaking to Rio Ferdinand a couple of weeks ago, he spoke at how good he was. He was obviously his roommate as well mm-hmm. at Leeds, but he got on say so he was like really up in that upper echelon of the the Premier League, and is probably a little bit underrated. Because for some reason, and I think they do it in England too, is we seem to always never, I suppose, celebrate our players. It's like as soon as they become a little bit over the hill, it's all right, go on, he's, just, he's played too much, get rid of him type of thing. Like they, England did with Rooney. It seemed to be a case when as soon as Robbie went to LA Galaxy, everyone was like, oh, he was finished. But he was still coming back and doing the goods. A natural goal scorer, and I think it shows now how much we're missing someone like oh, yeah. him to score the goal. It shows how much as well he loves playing for Ireland because that yeah. trip from LA, yeah. that's the west coast of the States coming back to play for Ireland, jet lag, family, the, all of those things, you've you got to say fair play to him. He, mm. he really, really put it in. You mentioned Rio Ferdinand, Jonathan Woodgate has obviously just hired him as his assistant yeah, and yeah. he was speaking Good last week him, yeah. and he said, obviously from the Leeds days, he turned around and he, he was being asked by the journalists and he said, do you realise what the youngsters in Middlesbrough are going to get from having Robbie Keane mm. as their striking coach? He said, you just can't underestimate, you can't put a value on what he's going to bring. So obviously as well, his, his reputation now as a coach and what he's doing okay. with Ireland as well is, is beginning to grow and those skills are being passed on, which uh, hopefully will be a benefit to some of the lads that were even taught on like yeah. Shane I Long's think I, I think one thing that uh, really stood out is his passion for him. You may, may or may not have heard him speaking about, mm. you know, recently about going and chasing players. And he's like, we shouldn't have to chase anyone. We're fucking Ireland. Like, yeah. They should be coming. Those, those were his exact yeah. words. Yeah. Um, 
I just thought it was really nice to hear someone like that saying it, it was because Roy Keane would have been known to say stuff like that. It's just like yeah. you know we're Ireland, we shouldn't be settling for this type yeah. of thing, and that's what kind of what we want. It ultimately led to Roy leaving or whatever. But yeah. Robbie was the perfect example, and he stayed out of the headlines. Um, he was just basically it seemed like the perfect pro, and every manager that had him seemed to love him. Yeah. And love him, and every player that played with him, you actually look at a lot of those one to elevens. A lot of people had Roy Keane, or sorry, Robbie Keane, that played with him. A lot of people had him in their team. Anyone who played with Spurs or or Leeds or anything like that generally had him in the team. Uh, ahead of other players in the Premier League, who probably were looked upon by I say the media or whatever yeah. as uh, better strikers. But ultimately, Berbatov goes on about how good he was. He would have played with Ronaldo, Rooney, and so on. He loved Robbie Keane. Well, he absolutely loved him. Robbie was a natural finisher. He was just a natural goal scorer, and and that was just so important. And that's why he scored so many goals. Yeah. And even I mean, we can talk about the the, the goal against Germany, obviously, in the two thousand and two World Cup goal against Spain, etc. The goal against France in the playoff. But even games like we played, I remember playing the Cyprus in two thousand and nine. And we were drawing 1-1 and we were struggling and we were poor and it looked like the game was going to peter out to 1-1 draw and we were going to miss out even on that playoff against France. You know that what that went. Robbie pops up with what, seven or eight minutes to go and pulls a goal out of nowhere. You know, and that's... It's, it's, it's poacher, those kind that of goals. Yeah, talent as well, that's it. I mean, yeah. we were as well as that he would day, score you know? goals from carrying the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. yeah. So he had yeah. all types of... He, but he, well, he hence the 68. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he could see, he would, Robbie scored goals. And I mean, you needed a goal... You, you you went to Robbie but, Keane. But is that the point, I think, maybe when we're looking at the other strikers too, Robbie's all-round game. Like, if we talk about Niall and the sort of goals he used to get, we talk about Don Gibbons or Frank Stables and John Aldridge, the goals they used to sort of get, they would be associated with a certain type of goal. Where Robbie, he was a, a man for all goals, yeah. whether it be a two-yard tapping, a screamer, a penalty, whatever. Robbie was was pretty much your go-to guy. He was, as you said, the perfect pro. And, you know, when you're starting of, of looking to pick a team... Goals win football matches. I know it's a you know cliche, whatever, but that's what he provided, and he was one of the reasons I think we we got to that two thousand and two World Cup as well, and and did so well from. And he was brilliant in that yeah. World Cup as well. Yeah. He really made a name. The, for the, the yeah. penalty um, after Hart had missed. I don't think anybody doubted he must have only been about twenty then, was he twenty one? Yeah. I when don't think anybody about balls doubted with, uh, he. Liam Brady did the Serie A. That was in our case as a nation, yeah. probably as much pressure on him, you know. Yeah, but uh, uh, nobody doubted he was going to score. He was just this kid at the time with yeah. a fearless kid that was just yeah. such a joy to watch. Like and yeah, it's uh, our greatest ever striker without a shadow of a doubt. Like he, he walks into the team. Doesn't so he? who? So yeah, who? So, yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, like. And you talk about the goal against Germany, and I'm just thinking the fellow who knocked that ball into him to get the goal is Niall Quinn, and se- second on the list in terms of the the all time goal scorers for Ireland, and another great servant, a, a great player in the Premier League as well. Um, probably of all of all the list there, Keane and Quinn are probably the two that I I've seen the most, and the fact that they've actually played together, so they have had a partnership, and they were good together. Uh, you probably would have seen other partnerships there, um. So you can probably talk more on that. But for me, like, Queen kept coming off the the, the bench uh, against Spain. He obviously won the the uh, won the penalties as well. You know, uh, at, at what age would have Queen been at that World Cup? Thirty four or something. Yeah, it was certainly the the end of his days anyway. Yeah, he but he came on against Germany, changed that game. Came on against yeah. Spain, changed that game. And these were world class teams yeah. at that time. You know, uh. And one thing I I did want to mention as well with Robbie is that I think other than Ronaldo, he was the only person that World Cup to score past Germany. Uh, Ronaldo got two in the final, and no one else had scored past Oliver Kahn mm. uh, in that, in that yeah. World Cup as well. Just wanted to add that in. But as I say, Quinn knocked that uh, ball in. I think it was Staunton up to uh, Quinn, Robbie Keane. The rest yeah. is history. Iconic moment, yeah. as we say. But I just, for me, as a, we're talking about partners, partnerships, and whatever, and I would have seen them play together. The team, that, they. Yeah. Dave and I think the other there. thing you should remember about Niall Quinn was obviously he didn't play in ninety four, but that was because he, he got a really bad cruciate, he got injured, yeah, yeah, a cruciate knee ligament, and he would have been in the squad as well. He would have played in three mm-hmm. World Cups. Um, you know, he was he was a kid himself in nineteen ninety, and again that goal against the Dutch, what an important goal yeah, that the was. Goal, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we, we were what going a huge, yeah. oh yeah, completely. What a huge goal that was. That's one one of the most important goals in Irish football in history. And again, we're talking about you know what you do for the country. Niall again is another one who's just done a huge amount for the game. Um, 
on off the pitch as well. 21 goals, and he, Niall would fairly admit he, he was never going to score the 68 goals that Robbie Keane got, but just a huge outlet. And any of the players you think about who played with Niall Quinn as well, we talk about players like Kevin Phillips at Sunderland, the goals Kevin Phillips got. Thrive. Kevin Phillips, very, very good striker, but the reason he got a lot of those goals was down to Niall Quinn as well. I mean, yeah, okay, Niall Quinn... Yeah. For me, anyway, it's going to be those two. I'm just putting it out there now. But, like, you, I suppose, Gary, you, you probably would have seen the majority of the lads, on that, if not all of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember Niall, Niall actually went to Euro 88 as well. It's often forgotten he came mm-hmm. off the bench in that um, England game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he obviously, definitely, he would have gone to 94. There's no doubt about that. He would have probably been in our team in 94. Um the other names I have, I mean, Frank Stapleton, uh, 20 goals, 71 caps. He was a superb centre forward with Arsenal and Manchester United. Um, a really top player. Did he, he went abroad to Ajax as well, didn't he? He did. He played yeah. with Ajax at the end The end of his days, more, yeah. Yeah, more or less. I just like when, the, when when our players go to these foreign countries or whatever. I just I, I appreciate yeah. that more because they, they don't just go to just England. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Frank was... Um, he scored some crucial goals, but he was he was a a real classy centre forward. He worked really hard as well. Could hold the ball up, lay it off. Um, I mean, Niall Quinn broke his record. Uh, Frank uh, probably or good. He he certainly was a crucial player in in Euro eighty eight and probably Italian ninety. He went to Italian ninety, but I think it was just. Um, just uh, he was just too late. Came came too late for him. He broke um, Don Givens' record just before Italia ninety. He got his twentieth goal against Malta in one of the warm up games. <clears throat> Don Givens, uh, a player I grew up with as a young boy in the seventies, uh, another great striker. Uh, a famous hat trick against the USSR in nineteen seventy four in Daly Mount. Um, an unbelievable win against a really talented side. We won three 0 Don Givens got a hat trick. He got four against Turkey in nineteen seventy five. Again, in the same qualifying campaign, <clears throat> ended up with nineteen goals. Uh, a great striker. Um, had had been on the scene from before my time back. I think his first cap was in nineteen sixty nine, but played right through the seventies. Uh, had become our uh, all time leading goal scorer. And then I'm going. I'm actually going to go way back. I'm going to go back to the 1930s and uh, a striker that, uh, probably again one of the superstars was a guy called Jimmy Dunn. He he got 15 caps for us and he scored. Well, I think it's still open to debate whether he got 12 or 13 goals. There's one of the goals is I think it's even disputed by newspapers and historians and everything. But um, were you on the you on the historian? So, <laughs> There's no VAR in those days. Well, I don't know. It's um, so but Jimmy was uh, again an an absolute superstar. He um he won the league with with Arsenal in in the in that great Arsenal team that won. He he was he was signed by them. Uh, they, they initially offered I think ten grand, which in nineteen thirty three was an absolute fortune, and it, 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 Sheffield United refused to sell him. And uh, but then they actually ran out of money and they had to sell him. But he was on the the Arsenal team that that won the league. He he scored for the, the previous seasons with Sheffield United. He'd scored over thirty goals for three successive seasons, and and scored forty one goals in one of those seasons, which is uh, I think will for remain for all time. That's Mo Salah level or whatever, mm. um, remain an all time record probably for an Irishman. Well, I'd love to see us find somebody who's capable of scoring forty one goals in English top flight. Um, he also played for Northern Ireland in those days um, when right. you could play for both. He I think he scored in four successive games for them. I think that that could still be a record, or maybe it's just been equaled. I don't think that's mm. been broken as well. I I could be wrong in that, but um. He was a star of the Irish team in the thirties and a uh, phenomenal goal scorer. Came back and played and I think managed Shamrock Rovers, won a couple of leagues and an FAI Cup at Rovers as well. And sadly died as a young man. He died um in, in his he died in the nineteen forties. Um but a, a superstar of his day. And again, I know people say we can't pick players that we haven't seen 
and obviously I haven't well, seen can, Jimmy Dunn. Well, I think yeah, because I think, head, so. yeah, I know it's, I, and I'm going back, and I have to look at what he did, and of the time, and he was such a prolific goal scorer, and his record stood for for forty years, his goal scoring record, and. Uh, Another record, actually, he actually came to prominence again recently when Jamie Vardy was uh, uh, had a record. I think Jamie scored was a ten or eleven consecutive games. But did Van Nistelrooy not break that? Well, Van Nistelrooy had oh, the Premier Van League Van record. Van Tees, yeah, Gordon but Lester, but uh, Jimmy Dunn has the English top flight record because Jimmy scored in twelve successive games for Sheffield United, and that record still stands. And, uh, I mean, for those who don't believe football was invented in 1992. Um, so uh, Jimmy still has that record and he was a phenomenal goal scorer. And uh, much as I loved Niall Quinn, Frank Stapleton, Don Givens, um, my vote for Robbie Keane's partner would have to be Jimmy Dunn. Okay. Uh, and did you want to give any sh- sh- mentions to John Aldridge? Yeah, I, I think all, uh, John Aldridge deserves a mention and he absolutely, he was a superb striker in that great Liverpool team in the late 80s and uh, scored some crucial goals. Uh, I think, what did he get, 20 goals for us? Um, great penalty taker. Um, I suppose we were waiting a long time for the first goal as well. Uh, I can certainly remember the wait and of course uh, he got the crucial goal against Mexico in the 94 World Cup so He's definitely worth the mention, but um, Jimmy Dunn would be my um, my choice for Robbie's partner. Okay, uh, Peter, who would who would you be on for that? Yeah, I, I. Or is there anyone we missed? It? No, I think we're pretty solid with the names. I always look back at John Aldridge with, with great fondness. Um, I probably wouldn't have him in my team, but I I do. He was one of kind of the first. Um, I would have kind of start understanding football early nineties, mm. and he would have been our kind of main man at that stage. And we were discussing off air. The, the stuttered penalty was such a big thing back then. It's something that, you know, you'd practice with your mates kind of yeah. thing. Like, so, um, was we, it legal? Was it not legal? Yeah. Kind of, will the ref yeah. flow? Will but he to not? To be honest, like, nowadays, yeah. they all kind of do it to a certain extent. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know if he was yeah. actually the first, but it's, you know, not, you know that old thing of picking a spot and hitting it doesn't happen anymore. They mm. normally wait for the goalkeeper, and he was kind of one of the first to do it. But I think I'd, I would have to go with Niall Quinn because... I don't know. You you don't really see it anymore, but I just I just love it, that kind of little and large dynamic of a strike duo, you know. And like you mentioned, Will, probably one of my favourite strike duos in the Premier League ever was Kevin Phillips and uh, Niall yeah. Quinn. And Kevin Phillips won the European Golden Boot one year with, Sund- with Sunderland. And uh, you know yeah. him and Roy, like he'd tell you himself, without sorry, without Niall Quinn, that wouldn't have happened. You know, Niall yeah. was was such a brilliant target man and. That's maybe why his goal um scoring record isn't so 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 yeah, he hasn't didn't score so many goals because in many ways he was he was taking the heat off his strike partner and, yeah. and winning head and header, you know, winning. He was headers. the battering ram. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that, like you said it earlier as well, Paul. I think if you want to sit a kid down and say, This is what a little and large strike partnership should do, it's that knockdown to Robbie Keane in two thousand and two and two, really, yeah. isn't but it? But he was also a menace to the opposition's box because Hierro mm-hmm. fouling him for, for uh, mm-hmm. I think it was the Robbie Keane then penalty. Yeah. I'm not sure what it was. Be. Very awkward to mark now yeah. because he was all kind of he was obviously a big tall guy, but I think as well he had a very good footballing brain, yeah. a very yeah. very good footballing. Do you think he, could, he was a hurler as well? So mm. I'd say he, he knew how to use his. Yeah. Oh yeah, he knew how to use, well, use his frame. Yeah. But he's a very intelligent man in general. Yeah. So when you say football brain, you, you hear him saying like stuff, even you know recently or whatever. And some of the stuff he, he says, it makes you kind of go, wow, this guy actually... He's, he's a very, Premier League chairman yeah. as well. He's the only mm-hmm. yeah. former pre- Ireland footballer I can think of that became a, a, a yeah, certainly and, a Premier League chairman. A superb yeah. chairman at yeah. as well. Yeah. I mean, much loved, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah. done since he's well, gone. But so. and, you know, and I, I think mm. as well, like we're trying to pick a, a team with balance. A couple other things about Dial Quinn. You put him in great from defending corners as well as attacking him. Still Gives him you the height. Stick him yeah. on the front post. Yeah. And then, like you said... You know, he went over Arsenal first. Man City absolutely adored at Man City yeah. and idolised at Sunderland. So I think he'd just be a great. You know, he's he's one of the good guys of Irish football as well, isn't he? Like good around and the a hotel. Good laugh. Good oh the yeah, hotels. yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, if you're yeah, watching yeah. that. Um. So Will, I think it's just down to you then. Who you'd have basically departed. Robbie's in there, 
hands down. So I think it's just uh, who you would like to see partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, it's Robbie and Niall. I think it's the most natural partnership. I think, again, what they bring. Yeah, we've had other great strikers. Frank, John Aldridge, Tony Cascarino. Um, we've always had lads who'd be able to contribute goals. But I think the two of them together, that was a natural great partnership. And again, what they would bring to the team. And the fact that they played together as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, look, we know that, but we were, you know, t- trying to mix other players and stuff. And even if they hadn't played together, I think it's it would have been quite common knowledge that that would have worked. Those two players would. Yeah. The other time it doesn't, but you know, they they, they worked, and um, as we say, well, that's what eighty nine goals between the two of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think well, that's it then. Unfortunately, Jimmy Dunn doesn't get into well, the team, okay. but we <laughs> can't agree on everything. Uh, so that's pretty much our team. Then uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments, and uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching.